Let's go look and see if the stock market is overvalued right now. So MarketWatch says, anyway, you look at it. The stock market is dangerously overvalued now. This is a month ago, and stocks have continued to go up since then. We don't need that advertisement. So the U.S. stock market today is almost as overvalued as it was at the top of January 3rd, 2022. If you remember January 3rd, it was way up there. And then all 22 just kept coming down and down and down. So comparing current valuation with the prevailed with what prevailed at previous market tops is important whenever the market recovers from a correction and reaches a new all-time high. Investors can hope that the correction or bear market will have worked off some of the excess Oh, excuse me, I'm going to edit that out. Excesses that have prevailed previously and provided foundation to support a significant new leg of the bull. Okay, right, so let's look at this chart. So this chart. So orange is 2022 at 100%. And then everything kept cra come crashing down. Not crashing, but uh, dropping pretty good all of 2022. Blue is where we currently are at the end of August. We're now at the end, beginning of October. So as you can see here, that's way above it. Uh, oh, here we go. So right here, Q ratio, it's way above where it's in 22. Everything else is almost to the same levels. The market's come up since this little this little article came out. Market came up a little bit, and it's still climbing. But I don't know if it's going to climb all through the rest of the year. It might drop down quite a bit in November, depending on, uh, you know, who gets it. And uh, if one person gets it, it might spike up pretty good, which is going to actually be kind of bad, I think, for the market because it's. I think everything is overvalued right now. I'm still dollar cost averaging because you're supposed to for the long run. Um, so that's the uh, market rot, market watch. Well, actually, hold on. Let's pause. Let's pause. So there's another reason that overvaluation doesn't do the market immediately is that valuation has relatively little predictive power at shorter term horizons. But each of the indicators featured in this chart has an impressive record forecasting the stock market's return over the subsequent decade. There are forecasting returns between now and 2034 that are below inflation. How valuation models now compare to the past? The percentiles plotted in the chart above are based on the distribution of monthly returns over a relatively short period of the U.S. market history, just since 2000. So if we extend our uh, horizon further back than the last two decades, the stock market appears to be even more overvalued. The chart below reports for each indicator... The percentile that its current reading represents relative to all monthly readings since 1970 and also since 1950. Any way you look at it, the stock market is dangerously overvalued. And here's the chart they were discussing. Overvalued. 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 So, anyway, I'm going to continue putting in my... Putting in my dollar cost average, dollar cost average to the market, like, like you're supposed to, like a good little weekly investor for the long haul. Let's see what Dow Jones looks like right now. It's a five year, oh, let me get my guy. It's a five year chart. Five year chart here. You can see how much it's climbed in five years. It went from 20, October 4th, 2019, it was 26,500, and now it's 42,184. That is a huge increase in five years, guys. That's a lot of, lot of dough right there. All right, so dollar cost averaging, here we are. Let's dollar cost average into this bad boy. I'm pause this real quick so I can get my screen set. All right, I got my little screen set up over here, guys. So I can pull up some stocks. Where are we at? We got $92,434. Total assets, total market value, $96,000. I'm down $3,600 because I bought some stuff on margin. I shouldn't have. I've been throwing another $1,000 a week at it. So what is up? What do we need to buy today? We always buy something every week. So we need to buy 34. Do we need to buy 34? Are we going to buy 30? Are we going to buy 30 shares of Ford? Let's buy 30 shares of Ford real quick, guys. 
Let's see what Forsman knows at ten and a half dollars, ten dollars fifty. Let's look here. Now that was its big spike over here, January 10th, 2022. And it dropped since then. Up, down, up, down, up, down. It's really low right now. And the dividends. You know Ford always pays a good dividend. Good dividend here. Look at that. Look at that. All right, let's pick up 30. We're gonna pick up 30. We're this is long haul investing right here. We're not we're not day trading Ford stock. Buy 30, not 130, just 30. We're going to market. That's $315. Buy it. Place order. Bam. Done. Right, let's go back. Let's go back, guys. Let's do some total market. I think we're going to get some uh, VTI. Vanguard Total Market. Let's click on it, see where we're at. So it's $281. And every all the places here have it right in the middle. Historical return above average. Historical risk above average. Right now, let's look at the five-year chart. Climbing. It's up 87% in five years. That's pretty good. Pretty good. That also means, another thing, might be overvalued. We don't know yet. We don't know yet. We'll find out when it comes crashing down, won't we, guys? When it comes crashing down. How many of these do I have? Hold on, let's go back one second. $21. I got VTI. I have six. Let's pick up four. Let's make it even 10. It only makes up 1.78% of my account. Let's pick up four. It's going to cost me $1,000, I think. Ew. Do I want to pick up four? No, I don't want to pick up four right now. I'm just going to pick up one because I don't want to put another thousand dollars on it. Market, we're going to buy one. Takes it from six to seven. Your $281. Close that down. Let's go back. Let's buy a couple more things. What should we buy? What is not overvalued? Everything's overvalued, but we still got to buy it so we can get our drip, our dividend. Get our dividend Vanguard Growth ETF. Uh, let's be SPGP. I think the SPGP is down right now. What does SPGP do? I forgot. These some uh, uh, it tracks some very important things. Look at that. Look at that climbing 21%. Okay, let's keep going. Keep going. Oil and gas exploration and production, as you can see, there has 8.414% communication equipment. Semiconductors, that's why they're up. Pasture Airlines, look at all these wonderful things it's holding. So, this is a dividend here. 1.38. Okay, has a dividend. Okay, let's buy some more of this. Let's buy some more of this wonderful dividend stock here. Vesco SP500 GARP ETF. $105.93. $105.93, guys. That's like saying $106. How many do we want to buy? Two. I'm gonna make a purchase of two. Big money, big money. That's two hundred and ten bucks, two hundred eleven bucks, two hundred eleven dollars and eighty six cents, guys. Right there on the screen. We're gonna review it. We're gonna place order. Perfect. Ooh, Rick, that's a lot of stuff you bought today. You're gonna be broke. You bought eight hundred dollars worth of stuff. Do we want Walmart? Do we want a Walmart stock? Walmart makes up 3.35% of our value of our account. We want to get that number up to uh, 5%, but Coca-Cola has set, makes 5%. Let's see. Do I need to buy yeah, those at work? APD, Air Products. Now let's buy FLQL. FLQL, Franklin U.S. Large Cap. Let's see what this five years about on FLQL, guys. Oh, yeah, 75% five years. That's pretty good. Okay, we got expense ratio of 0 0.15. It's a little bit higher than what needs to be. A little bit higher than what needs to be. I think VOO is lower. Um, that's what they're holding. Apple, Microsoft, NVIDIA, Amazon, Meta, Google. Avgo, MasterCard, Alphabet, Costco. That's what they're holding. 
and we got a little distribution. You know, it's not a dividend, it's a distribution. 1.12%. So, let's buy some. How much does it cost? It costs $57.67. So, let's buy four. Make it around $200. Make, well, it should be $228. Let's see. Buy four. Uh, four. Market. Two hundred thirty-one dollars. Oh, because it's sixty-seven. Yeah. Review it. Place order. There it is. So I think that's uh, just dollar cost average into the market, like we've always been doing, guys. Nothing different here. This is how the game is played. Let's go to accounts summary. See where we're at. Okay, so our. Three month change is up $7,500. Today change up $184. My value is $92,000. So this is what I need to transfer from my bank account to this account to make it back uh, even. That's how much stuff I bought that I didn't have money for. But I'm going to transfer that within this next month. $1,000 a week. Okay. Now let's show you all some what dollar cost averaging into the market is. So... I don't know if you can see, yeah, you can see that. So if you put a hundred dollars a week, guys, hundred dollars a week into the market, let's say the SP 500, right? You do a hundred dollars a week here, eight percent, eight percent is kind of low. Let's do it for 35 years. So you're 25 years old, you start investing into a Roth IRA, hundred dollars a week, SP 500. This we're going to be conservative, say eight percent, it's probably like nine or ten percent. 35 years from 25 years old to 60 years old, right? And you contribute $100 a week. That's $5,200 a year, which is less than what you're even maximum allowed to contribute to a Roth IRA. I think the max is $6,500. But if you just do $100 a week from the age of 25 to 60, that's 35 years, you'll have $1 million of tax-free. You could withdraw it. Tax free out of your Roth, million dollars from the age of 25 years old to 60 years old. 35 years. Is that right? 25 plus 35 is 60. That's right. Initial balance 5,200. That's what you put in the first year. Ooh, excuse me. So you earned $894,000 of interest. That's a lot of money. And you've only deposited 181000 Your. The money out of your account is $181,998.60, which you can't see that on the screen. There you can. And your total interest is $894,041.03. So compound rate, 8.3. So it's actually, let's say, it's not going to be 9 every year. It's just averaging 9, 10, maybe 11. So if, it's, if you average 9% for 35 years, you're at almost 1.4 million, 1 million three hundred ninety-eight thousand three hundred fourteen dollars and twelve cents. Your additional deposits are the exact same, guys. Ten percent. Are you gonna? Is S and P gonna uh, compound ten percent? One point eight million. One point eight million. So that's not realistic that you're gonna get ten percent every year. So let's just be conservative with ourselves here. $100 a week for 35 years, millionaire, tax-free, pulled out of your Roth, tax-free. I'm not a financial advisor. This is not financial advice. Make sure you thumbs up my video, guys. All right, I'm going to go ahead and end it there. I uh, appreciate you watching my channel. I uh, appreciate you subscribing and liking. Please, in the comment section, uh, tell me what you got. Tell me what you think of my awesome video. Sure to appreciate it. Peace out, guys. Thanks for stopping by.